Hello and welcome back to Open Seas at Home. Today's video is going to cover a demonstration of a few different materials that I've selected that are easy to demonstrate and I'm just going to go through one by one. Just as a reminder, there are two types of materials. There's uniaxial material and there's ND material, which are used in continuum elements. I'm going to focus today's video on uniaxial materials that define a uniaxial stress-strain relationship. Even though they're called materials, we really want to think of these as models. Uh, these are uniaxial models, relationships that give a general Y versus X relationship. It could be stress strain, moment curvature, moment rotation, axial force versus axial strain, axial force versus axial deformation, really depending on where it is that you use them. If you use them in a fiber, if you use them as a cross section, if you use them as a hinge. So it really depends on the application. OpenSeas Wiki is the best place to get the documentation for the uniaxial material command. You have to dig deep a little bit in the wiki and then maybe just make a bookmark for the page that's titled uniaxial Com material command. In my demonstration, I'm going to have this wiki page to the right sharing the screen for the demonstrations that I'll be doing today. This is the library of materials that I'm going to go through today. It's just a subset of the materials. I'm going to look at some steel and reinforcing steel materials, some concrete materials. I'm actually going to start with just the standard uniaxial materials, uh, such as an elastic uniaxial material. I'm going to cover the hinge models, the modified IMK models. This is just what is documented. I know that out there there's some updates to these material models, but I do not have them. And I'm also going to show you some soil spring materials, the PY spring materials. I'm going to start with the basic elastic uniaxial material. The input for this material is pretty straightforward. It just has an elastic stiffness. You can actually have a different stiffness in the negative loading direction. You can make it almost zero. Now, if you want pretty much zero, there's actually an elastic no tension material that is available, and I will cover that next. Here is the elastic no tension material. The only stiffness that you really define is the stiffness in the negative direction. The next material in open seas is the elastic perfectly plastic material. I'm not a fan of having a zero tangent stiffness, but if you're going to have it, you want to use this model here because it's a lot more robust than using a different material and assigning it a very low stiffness. In this material, you can define the elastic stiffness, the yield strain in the positive direction, and you can also define a different yield strain in the negative direction as well as an initial gap. And that is what I'm showing here on the left-hand side is this same material with an initial gap. So depending on the range in which you load it. Now, in this material, you have the same stiffness in the elastic range. All you can really change is pretty much the yield strength in the two directions. So as you can see, I have a higher yield strength in the negative direction than in the positive direction. If I set my initial strain of zero, you have no gap. The next material that we have in open seas is the elastic perfectly plastic gap material. Here you define an elastic stiffness and the yield strength and this initial gap, which is really an offset. It also actually has a damage parameter. It's very important that you're careful when you load this type of element because sometimes you can really go to strains that have not been tested in the development and this is the type of results that you get. So make sure you test the limits of your materials and elements and components in OpenSea or check your implementation of it as well. The next set of materials are the three concrete materials that we have. We have Concrete 01, Concrete 02, and Concrete 04. This is Concrete 01, which is the simplest concrete material. It takes minimal number of input parameters. Also, it has zero tensile strength. This is actually a great material because it's very inexpensive computationally. So if you're running a really large structure where you expect your reinforced concrete components to have racked, then it may just be more efficient to use this type of material. You can model confined concrete or you just reduce the residual strength to maybe 0.3 times. And so that would model unconfined concrete. So you can play with the strengths as well as the residual strength to define this second part of your concrete curve. This is a very simple material and very commonly used in large structural modeling. Everybody's favorite material is concrete O2. It's very common to use when you're doing reinforced concrete sections. 
This is the behavior. Again, it's a relatively computationally inexpensive material. It doesn't have too many parameters. And it actually defines your curve pretty well. You can define the elastic stiffness and the residual. Here you have an example of an unconfined concrete. So you just need a couple of parameters to really play with this material. If you increase the range, you can see this is the type of behavior that it does. In a smaller range, this is the behavior that you have. And you have a very nice curve in the tensile direction. Whenever you're looking at structures that haven't fully cracked or you really want to be careful with where your yield point is, this is the material that you might want to take into account. Big limitation of this material is that this part of the curve is defined by a parabola. Therefore, you can only really define two points, a strength, a strain, or an initial slope. And you can get the relationship between the three of them through a parabola. And Concrete 04 is a pretty popular material as well. It has a much more detailed description of the tensile curve. It's actually a parabolic curve in the tensile strength. And it's got a few more parameters, but not too many. It does a better job of modeling the Mander model because you actually have control of F prime C, E sub C, and the initial stiffness. So this curve is no longer just a parabola. What you can do is you can make this much longer and therefore you have much more confined concrete. If I increase the range of testing. Here's an unconfined concrete. Concrete 07 is the Chang and Mander's 1994 concrete model. Here's the documentation. The figures have expired, but here's the figure on the left of the behavior of this concrete material. If you increase the range, this is the type of curve that you get. And it's actually dependent on the triaxial stress ratios. You can model the confining stresses through triaxial stress ratio. And you can look at this documentation in the manual. As you increase to 100%, you have a fully confined concrete. What you want to do with this material is go to this link here, which is the old manual that I had written that gives you a lot more information about this concrete of seven material. That was the end of the concrete materials. Now we're going to look at some steel and hinge materials. Again, you can use these for steel. These are really nice bilinear and multilinear material models and behavior models. So you can use them for steel. You can use them for moment curvature, as well as moment rotation in beam hinges. So the hystretic material to me is the simplest material model that you have. Here's the documentation on the right-hand side, and here's a sample of it on the left-hand side. What I really like about this material is I'm going to increase the range so you can actually see that you can test it and it becomes actually a multilinear type of behavior that you can define. In this example demonstration here, I'm going to show you what the different parameters that you can play with. So you've got the yield strength, initial stiffness, and the basic envelope points. There's two damage models in this material as shown here on the right hand side. There's a damage due to ductility and there's a damage due to energy. So the one due to ductility is pretty much a function of how far beyond this yield point you are, and the one due to energy is how many inelastic cycles past this yield point you have done. One limitation of this model, as I've said before, is this envelope doesn't change. The damage parameters actually affect the loading and reloading behavior. So I'm going to show you these. These are the two damage parameters. Right now, there's zeroed for both of them. If I play a little bit with the ductility parameters, you can see here this is the type of behavior that you have. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to pull out the energy one. As you can see, you've got a different behavior. So you can actually have a combination of these two damage parameters. Very important is what are the right numbers for these damage parameters? Well, these are the numbers that you play with in calibrating and validating the model based on your test data. Additional feature that this material has that I really like is being able to play with the pinching. So you have here very full curves, but you can actually play with the ratio of the X and the Y, so you actually have a pinched type of behavior. So you can see there's very little energy dissipation in this region. You can almost play with the opposite. If you change the X and the Y, you actually have very full loops, almost like a nice steel section. So just through, through two very basic parameters, you can play with what this envelope looks like. And of course, you can change the displacement points and force points in the positive and negative direction. In additional parameters, you can actually control the slope, the exponential of the slope of this unloading curve. So if you go all the way to 0.5, you could see that this curve here, so if I copy these data, 
and bring it back to zero. And I plot on top. You can see that we've had changes in the unloading stiffness here and the reloading stiffness in the direction. So I like the hysteretic material because you can actually do a lot with it to model a lot of different kinds of behavior. Next material that is similar to it in objective, but it has a lot more input parameters, is the pinching for material. So I'm going to increase this range of testing, similar to what I had before. Here's what the pinching for material behavior looks like. I've actually just set different numbers in this slide. So there's a lot of parameters that you can play with to change a lot of different points on this curve. I'm not, I don't have the patience to play and change them. But it does something very similar to what the hysteretic material does with just a lot more points. And if you have carefully calibrated data, you can use this material model. I believe this material model was developed to model beam calm connection. Next material that we would like to look at is just the basic steel one material. We're back to very basic materials that have a bilinear curve. It's not elastic, perfectly plastic material. And it actually has an optional isotropic hardening. So these are the basic parameters. But if I play with the A factors in different ways, the A1, A2, and A3, and A4 factors of isotropic hardening, you can get different types of behavior. This is something that you would want to play with to see what kind of behavior you're trying to get. So it's different in the positive and the negative direction. The next material is another bilinear material. It's the steel O2 material, very common, and it's typically what people start with when they're doing their open seas modeling. Just like the other material, it has the isotropic hardening parameters. It is symmetric in tension and compression, but you can always put it in parallel with other materials or in series. And you can play with the R factor. These different R values determine the shape of this part of the curve and this other part of the curve. Set back to zero. I get a bilinear curve that looks like this. Reinforcing steel is a nice material that was developed a long time ago. And I like the behavior. It has a really nice envelope, but to me, it's a little bit finicky on the input parameters. I haven't been able to get it to work consistently. I like to run lots of different parameter studies, so I really have a hard time with this material. But it's definitely something that's worth looking at, as well as looking into development of this material. It has the capabilities of dealing with buckling of the rebar in the compression direction. So this, this is a material with a lot of potential. There are three types of modified Ibarra Medina Kravinkler degeneration models. This is the bilinear hysteretic response model, the bilin material. This material is commonly used to model plastic hinges at the end of the beams. What I really like about these modified IMK materials is the fact that this envelope actually does change with time. So the backbone is a function of loading. So here's an example. This is a pretty straightforward, but if you play with a parameter such as the deterioration parameter here, nothing happens. And then you grab another parameter. And then a lot happens. A lot of studies have been done to demonstrate the different applications of this material model. The second modified IMK deterioration model is the peak-oriented hysteretic response. And here's an example where I've actually set the tension and compression side as having different values. So it does not have to be a symmetric model. If you play with the rate of cyclic deterioration in a positive direction, you can actually see that my curve has de degraded. If I take these data, and I put it back into what I had before. There's without and with deterioration. As you can see, the actual backbone curve has changed. The third of these materials is the pinched hysteretic response material. If we play with the rate of cyclic deterioration parameter, you can see that you can actually have significant deterioration. If we copy these data, and we compare it to a case of no deterioration, we can see then that the backbone curve has changed and has deteriorated. So you have to look at the documentation and understand what each one of these parameters is to do a better implementation of this material to match the type of data that you need. Another fun material in open seas is the self-centering material. It's pretty much elastic in this region and inelastic at the ends. And you can play with the different parameters of the area of the forward loading and unloading that changes the size of this area here. You can actually play with additional parameters. This is the easiest one to show you. So you can actually go to the limit where now you have this type of material behavior. I also wanted to show you some PY spring materials. You have soft clay 
or sand material. And if you play with these different parameters, you can actually change the behavior of this material. So if I put in 0 0.1, you can actually have a pinching in this curve. There's the TZ springs that have the different types of behavior. This is an example of the QZ simple one material. You can play with different parameters to get a different type of behavior. This is just to show you that it's really important to go through and understand not just what the basic backbone curve of your material is, but very much what the hysteretic behavior is in this material. So this is an important issue nowadays with the ASC41 implementation, and OpenSeas actually gives you a lot of freedom of different materials that have different backbone curves and different behaviors of the backbone curves, as well as different hysteretic behaviors. That's pretty much all the materials I wanted to show you. What I just really wanted to emphasize, they're called materials, but they're really behaviors and models for a force deformation relationship, whatever the force and the deformation may represent. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.